Hello, I'm Morse Kohansky, wilderness living and survival instructor of about 40 some years. I'm now into uh, over 70 years old and I can indulge in these issues of reflecting back on my life and uh, uh, talking a little bit about how I end up being here and having spent a career as a survival and wilderness living skills and outdoor educator in uh, in various ways to make a living. Now of all the knives I have here I probably have all the knives I used at one time in my career. I was a surveyor before I was a, a survival instructor and I probably went through half a dozen of these knives. They're very heavy. They're almost like a hunting knife. Perhaps a little more convenient to carry than a hunting knife. Two blades and I lost a lot of these because I carried them in my jeans back pocket and eventually the stitching would give out and then finally when I smartened up the uh, situation was I carried a special sheath for the knife stopped losing them but there are a number of these this is a shrade and I would say I like shrade in many respects as an exception of using a surname on a knife and, uh, and uh, knowing that the surname stands behind something positive. Now that is a rather heavy knife and the next knife that I ran across that I used but I discovered I was only able to get one and it's a Heinkel I think or whatever much lighter. You can see that these colors that knives are left with they're so easy to lose and you're often stuck with the problem of making them more visible. But I couldn't get any more of this knife. Now this is a lock blade as opposed to the first one and I must mention lock blades, never trust the lock blade because over the years I have many scars to prove that as you work vigorously and hard, many lock blades will, will, will uh, uh, be a little independable. Next thing you know, you've shut your knife on your hand. Now when you use a knife where that's a folding knife, always handle it as if it'll lock on you whether it's a lock blade or not. That means holding it in a way where this part here, this line here is always left exposed. Now I became very enamored and as my income grew in some respect I began to favor out of the series of knives that you uh, uh, that the Boker company makes uh, I probably have two or three of these and I lost a number of them very expensive Boker knives when you looked at them with a uh, magnifier you could not find any kind of uh, flaw German make and so on. Now I used this knife most of my career. The trouble is I could not expect people to buy this knife as part of the courses. So we gravitated towards this very knife. This would be around $40. That was like two days wages. This is like $1.50 in comparison. So with the university programs, this is the knife that we used for many, many years. We developed our skills. So the knife that um, um, uh, we used here would carve the tri-stick and do many things but we couldn't use a baton because at that time that the knives we were using the, this type of knife baton, uh, using a baton was uh, 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 hadn't developed yet sort of thing. This knife was so cheap that we actually found that it would be very easy to spread it apart with this action from side to side and it seemed like a chunk of heavy wire was used and some people would re-drill this and put in a, a pin. But for about, I would say, maybe 10 years of my career, this was the knife. Now, on one occasion, I walked into a hardware store and these knives were for sale. And I ended up buying everyone in the store, which was probably a couple hundred. And so for the next few years, this was the knife that I sold to the students and they used it. A rather elegant knife, again, a, 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 a German maker. Uh, but when we ran out of those there was no more to be found sort of thing and I'm lucky to actually have this one. Here we have the wooden type uh, scales I think they call them here. These would fall off very often and students would epoxy on their own exotic wood scales and would uh, uh, improve on the knife sort of thing. But I would continually be using the boker. And the next knife that came into play, I still have a package because I used to buy them by the carton. And this particular style of knife called the Open L, which very traditional and because it was relatively inexpensive. Now all these knives in particular, this one here, were very sparky. 
when we uh, 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 wanted to light fire. Well, that knife, and I'm still using the open L. <coughs> then came this knife, and then this one, and then we would modify this one to look like this. And after I met Tom, we worked out what we thought were all the features of what we would like in a common, everyday, functional knife. And today, I tend to carry this one, which is the uh, um, uh, uh, the Skookum uh, Rod Garcia, Whitefish Montana, makes this knife. This knife actually was patterned on this knife. So you asked me, what kind of blade configuration do you like? And I said something like that. And so he, he uh, came up with that kind of unique appearance. Well, anyway, knives are a rather important thing. After you're properly dressed and you have an assured method of lighting a fire, you uh, want to have a, a, a dependable knife. And if you're going to define survival, well, we'll leave that. This is a survival knife. The rest here, I would say, are functional, everyday uh, knives used by people in the boreal forest. But this is the one that I would call the survival knife because it's a pry bar that works wood really, really well.